Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about iPad note taking. A lot of you may have gotten an iPad over summer for the school year and are probably looking for the best note taking solution for school. Today I'm going to be comparing the most popular apps, GoodNotes and Notability. They both cost essentially the same, with GoodNotes costing $7.99 and Notability costing $8.99. If buying a notes app pushes you away, just consider the fact that buying a real notebook would cost around the same. So let's get started. For each application, I'll be talking about four things. Features, ease of note-taking, file organization and UI, and variety of templates. I'll be going pretty in-depth with the applications, so I've added timestamps to skip to the part you might be interested in. One really important feature for these note-taking applications to have is split-screen. Both apps do split-screen a little bit differently. GoodNotes uses Apple's dedicated split-screen feature to create new windows, which actually means you can have up to three different notebooks open at the same time. This also means you can have the same notebook open on all three instances, which can be useful when referencing something on the page. For example, I have two notebooks open here, and then I can drag out another one and open the third notebook, just like that. A cool thing you can do is if you swipe this one away, you have these two uh, notebooks open, and these are the same notebooks, so if you update on one, you can see it on the other. And a really useful part about this is that you can be referencing something on another page without having to scroll up and down which gets pretty annoying. This can be really handy when you're solving a math question and the question is on a different page. You don't have to scroll up and down, you can just have them open at the same time. Notability has its own split screen menu where you have to swipe right from the left edge of the screen to get to the note switcher menu. What you can do from this screen is drag in a note from your recents list like this, and then you can size it however you want, but that's pretty much it with this one. The problem with this is that you can't have two instances of the same notebook open. It just prevents you from doing that at all. And this kind of sucks because like GoodNotes, I wish I could reference a different part of the screen, not even just write on it, but that's the only downside with Notability. Personally, I prefer how GoodNotes does things since you have a lot more freedom and customization with their method. A huge benefit of having a digital notebook is that you can drag in images from virtually anywhere. So GoodNotes has a quick access button right here where you can just quickly tap and import images like this. And you can also drag in images from let's say a floating photo window. Another thing you can do is press the crop button and then you do this free hand crop, which you can see how bad I do it here. Or you can do just a regular rectangular crop, which is a lot nicer in my opinion. Another cool thing you can do is actually drag and drop Safari links. Sadly, all it does is bring in the text and you can't really interact with it in any way. You also have the sticker option where you can just drag in anything like sticky notes or just other different types of stickers, which is nice, but I personally would never use it. You can also move them around after placing it, which is pretty nice. So one big benefit of having a digital notebook is that you can actually scan documents and import physical documents. So all you have to do is open the scan documents section. And then if you have, let's say my script for this video, you can just aim your camera at it and scan the document and import it into your notebook. It'll automatically find the corners of your paper. And when you press save, it should be imported to your next page like this. So this is really nice and pretty useful. So Notability has a lot more ways to import media. If you just come to this top right plus button and press it, you can have a lot of different options. If you press photo library, select an image, you can just move it wherever you want and it'll be on your screen. Another thing is that there is a crop menu like GoodNotes. Sadly, there is no freehand crop, but I didn't use it much anyways, so I don't really miss it. Notability does give you the option to buy extra sticker packs, but personally I would never buy them because I don't really use it in the first place. But to use them, you just press the plus button, stickers, back to school supplies or basics, and then you can just add the default stickers um, or the ones you downloaded. You do also get the same exact document scanning as GoodNotes because I'm pretty sure they use the same thing that Apple supplies them, but that's where the similarities end. You have the option to search for GIFs, and import them directly into your document. And although I would never use it, it's a nice feature to have. If you just search it up, press it, you can rescale it however you want and move it around and it'll always stay animated. 
You can also directly import web clips by dragging in the links like this from Safari into the notes document. And it gives you the option to take a snippet of the website, which is really cool if it loads. Um, so I press save here and then it'll give me basically a screenshot of my website without having to actually take a screenshot. So Notability clearly has the win here with a lot of nice to have features that GoodNotes just doesn't have. Both apps do have text recognition, but it's a $299 app purchase for Notability, which is already a dollar more expensive than GoodNotes. GoodNotes allows you to write with the Apple Pencil, for example, right here. I'm just gonna write a couple words. And then if I get the select tool, I can actually copy the selection of the text that I will circle. And then if I just tap it right here, I can click on convert and it'll show me what I wrote in text format. So I can just copy it, send it to whoever I want, or just paste it in like another notes document like this. This also allows you to search your notes document for handwritten or typed text, which is really nice if you have many notebooks and need to search for the right one. So if you just leave the menu here, on the bottom there's a search tab, and if I search for hello, my, it'll find the document that has those exact keywords and show me by highlighting it right like this. So Notability has as a paid add-on, uh, which is under the technology tab in the store. It's called handwriting writing recognition, and it costs $2.99. Um, but it is technically better. It has the same feature where you can write and convert it to text, but this one also allows you to convert handwritten text to typed text directly on the notebook. So I'm just going to demonstrate it right here. Just circle my text, click convert, and then if I convert selection, it'll change it to text directly on the notebook. Other than that, it has the same search the document for all your handwritten text, which is also really nice. So if I search hello, it'll highlight it just like GoodNotes. Although Notability has the better feature, it's behind a paywall, so I prefer how GoodNotes does things. So both apps have a laser pointer, which is really nice if you're in a video call helping someone out or presenting something big on the screen. One thing to note is that the Notability's laser pointer only shows up when you're mirroring the screen. Both of them look just like how I'm drawing on the screen right now. And if I switch to Notability, you see it's not here, but when you do connect it to a screen, it will show up. Both apps have a macOS and iOS counterpart. This is really nice when you want to read over your notes somewhere else or while your iPad is charging. Both macOS counterparts are just iPad app ports, so they look identical, and they're synced through the iCloud. I think this is the right way to do it since all you can do is still edit the documents from your Mac and you know the interface since it's literally the same design. For the iOS counterparts, it looks like the floating window on the iPad which also means it's easy to navigate since you already know where everything is and all your notes are again synced through iCloud. So this is kind of what it looks like on the right and I can show you what the iPhone looks like on the left. So the macOS and iOS counterparts don't serve as an advantage over the other and are essentially the same interface on all platforms. Both apps have their unique features and these are just nice to have that can help your purchase decision for which app is best for you. GoodNotes has a few notable features. The first one is this experimental flashcard mode where you can add pages that resemble flashcards by finding it in the template section. If you find the flashcard, you press it, and then you add it to your screen. And on the top, you can put in the, the word itself. I'm just gonna put people, and on the bottom, you can write the definition. Um, I'm just gonna write a random word, uh, hi. Uh, you do that, and then you press the study flashcards button, and then it'll give you the word, and then you can guess the definition. So, but that's basically it. Notability has an audio recording feature that allows you to record a lecture's audio and playback in real time alongside your notes to see what the professor was talking about during that section of notes. And it's pretty handy if you get tired of listening and you want to check back later to double check what was happening. So I'm just going to demonstrate it right here. Uh, hello, this is like a test. Um, so let's say the lecture's talking and you kind of like take notes, blah, blah, blah. Um, just draw a smiley face and then you pause it. What you can do is now play back, and it'll play back according to what was said. 
and you kind of like take notes, blah, 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 uh, just draw a smiley face, and then... So let's say you're confused on this section, you can just play back the audio and it'll highlight the part that was written while the audio was being said, which is really useful. So Notability has another in-app purchase where you can convert your handwritten math equations into text format. So in the Notability shop, under technology, the first part has math conversion. So just by looking at the example photo, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, you can see that the handwritten equations can be cleanly organized into text format. And other things in the shop are like different featured templates, um, different stickers, and the different types of notebooks. Uh, so I have gotten the digital notebook before, but I haven't really liked it, so I just stuck to the regular notebook. Notability seems to have a lot of additional features that are nice to have, but most of them are behind paywalls, and if you think it's worth it for you, I think it's something you should definitely consider. The pen tool is the most important part about note-taking, obviously. So comparing how the pen tool works on both apps is what I would consider the first thing to think about when using these apps. GoodNotes has three different pen types, fountain, ball, and brush. Fountain pen allows you to have different pressure sensitivity, which mimics a real fountain pen. This also allows you to have different tip sharpnesses, which can be really nice if you're a light, precise writer. So just look at this. Um, I'm not sure if you can tell the difference, but there is. And you can also change the pressure sensitivity, which can be pretty useful sometimes. The ball pen is basically the opposite of the fountain pen. Every stroke is the same thickness, just like a real ball pen. And the brush pen kind of works like a permanent marker. It allows you to go insane with the brush thickness. This pen is really sensitive with um, pressure sensitivity and you can actually adjust how much it is, uh, which can be demonstrated right here. I'm not that good of a drawer, so please don't judge me on that. For each pen style, you have the ability to preset three different color types and three different stroke thicknesses. This is nice if you ever only use three different colors for your notebook, so I wish there was a way to get more. For the stroke thickness, I would usually preset different sizes for titles, subheadings, and body text. So the thickest one would obviously be the header, the middle one would usually be my subheading, and then the smallest one would be for body text. Notability tackles the pen situation a little bit differently. Instead of having different pen types, you're limited to two types of strokes with pressure sensitivity enabled and disabled. The first is kind of like the fountain pen and the ball pen from GoodNotes. So if you kind of see the one here, this one you can't really see pressure sensitivity, this one you can. So for each type of stroke, you have the ability to choose from 12 different pen sizes. So this is the thickest one, and this is the thinnest. I wish Notability did something similar to GoodNotes where you can choose precise pen sizes so that I know what I'm used to in real life and can kind of mimic it in the virtual one. You also get two pages of preset color palettes, which is nice for contrasty colors on the white background. And another thing is you can get these custom color palettes where you can choose whatever hex code you want and draw with those. Something Notability does better, however, is allowing you to create a favorites list that you can drag anywhere with the exact pen type, color, and size, so you can switch quickly later on. So it shows up in the side panel right here, and these are preset colors that I have made beforehand so that I don't have to worry about the different like heading size, body size, I can just tap on my preset list. Notability has more pen features and I like how it works a little better than GoodNotes. Although both are really good for note taking, I just wish both apps had a pencil mode that mimicked the real life pencil texture. The eraser tool is the second most important tool in note taking, and in my testing there is a clear winner on which app does it better. GoodNotes is honestly a little bit disappointing on how it erases your strokes. GoodNotes did so well in their pen customization, it makes me question how little thought went into the eraser. So if you just look at the eraser size here and disable erase entire stroke, I'm going to draw a quick diagram right here and the eraser is going to kind of snap. It doesn't cut exactly where your eraser circle is, which is kind of misleading and hard to make precise images. 
Another thing is the eraser sizing like this here. Uh, you only get three different sizes and you can't customize how big or small you want them to be. Another thing is the eraser doesn't actually scale to the paper size. So if you're completely zoomed out, it's going to be the same size as if you're completely zoomed in. It just seems like a really weird way to do things and it's kind of misleading. I just really wish they kind of made the sizing similar to the pen tool where you get different sizings. Notability's eraser tool is leagues better than GoodNotes. You get all the pens functionality in the eraser with all 12 stroke sizes that you can see right here. And you also get the difference between whole and partial just like GoodNotes. But the sizing itself is already leagues better. So for erasing, you can kind of see right here, I'm going to just draw some random lines, that if you draw with the whole thing, it um, draws a little bit of a path that shows you exactly what you highlighted. And then the things you highlight over, it'll fade it out just to show that you selected it. For the partial eraser, you can kind of already see that the sizing and the scaling is dependent on your zoom. And then if you look really closely, you can get really sharp lines like this because the eraser tool cuts exactly where the circle um, overlaps. So it doesn't have the problem where it erases more than you want, and it's a lot better if you want somewhat precise drawings in your notes. Good notes eraser is just not that great, and all I can say is it's technically usable, but notability is way better in this one. So both apps have a type of easy shape drawing tool, which is really nice if you want to draw a box or circle for organization. GoodNotes has a dedicated shape tool, but you can use the regular pen tool to drop shapes as well. So I'm not too sure why you need both. You can get these shapes automatically by drawing and then holding down with your pencil. So you can see I auto drew a triangle right here and then a circle here. Stars don't seem to work, they just kind of assume you're drawing some weird shape uh, and then you can also draw like rectangles quadrilaterals and another cool thing is uh, that the pen tool also draws them as well except these aren't exactly shapes they're just a bunch of lines you combine together so one cool thing about good notes is that you get the option to fill color or disable it so the difference is if you draw let's say a circle here with it disabled you see it's pretty empty and if you draw it again with it enabled, then it kind of fills it in for you. Also, you can just tap it later and then adjust the shape however you want it and move it around just as you like. But most people are just going to use it to draw a straight line. Notability is essentially the same as GoodNotes. You can have the shapes automatically made for you and you can just readjust like GoodNotes. So let's say I drew a triangle right here. I can adjust it like that, which is pretty nice. You do not get the fill in the feature. Uh, stars don't work, but one cool thing is that you can draw arrows like this, which I do find pretty useful. And another thing is that if you actually go back, you can do the dotted lines feature. Uh, and you can get dotted lines for arrows like this too. De and you can choose different sizings for your, your uh, shapes, which is really nice. And again, you can adjust it. Only difference between the two is Notability's arrow feature and GoodNotes fill in the box feature. Notability just makes it a little nicer in my opinion, but I really wouldn't get one over the other for this feature. There's not much to talk about for the highlighter other than the fact that both seem to work just like the pen tools for each of the applications. The select tools have a lot more functionality than you would first assume. It's not just for moving around things you wrote or drew. GoodNotes is pretty simple in how it works. If you have the select tool, you can circle anything you have on the paper, including images. After selecting, you can tap around the selected region and you're given a couple options. First with the basic cut, copy, and delete, but a cool thing you can do is resize and change the color of the stroke. So if I just do resize right here, you can see I can angle it or do it however I want. And if I press color, I can change the color of the stroke after the fact, which is pretty useful in some cases. There's another function called take screenshot, which actually snaps a portion of the page where you selected, so it, you can share it to others pretty easily. The add element allows you to add the drawing to a sticker collection, which I personally don't use. 
Finally, there's a convert feature, which I talked about earlier, which changes your handwritten text to a typed version. Just like that. And then you can copy it and do whatever. Notability has the same cut, copy, and delete as GoodNotes, but it has a dedicated duplicate button to quickly make a copy without having to paste it. What Notability does better is in the style section. You can actually change the stroke size itself, not just the color, and obviously you do get the option to change the color as well. You can even change it to different features like it's dotted or not. And this just gives you a lot more customizability. And finally, there's the Convert tab, which is the same as GoodNotes, and lets you change your handwritten words into typed text. So just by pressing that, except Notability obviously lets you change it to uh, text on the screen. I think Notability has a better functionality with the Select tool, but it's not anything too major since both apps share a majority of the same features. Both apps have a way to manage different subjects to organize your class notebooks and clean organization of your files. GoodNotes has a really nice looking start screen with intuitive user interface so you know where to click to create a new document or anything. If you click on new, you get the option to import a new notebook, folders, image, scan document, photo with the camera, file through the files app, uh, or even just a quick note. Where GoodNotes stands out from Notability is the fact that you can put folders inside of folders inside of folders and not being prevented from doing so. This is really nice if you want to hide some notebooks that aren't in use instead of having them on the sidebar or something. And this is really nice if you want to do some file organization like let's say put homework inside of one folder inside of a subject. So I'm just going to move these documents into this folder right here and if you see I can put them all inside here and just put even more folders. Um, this is really useful for, let's say I said uh, homework, you can do different project folders, and it just really helps with um, clearing up any clutter on your notebook. You can also go into this type of list view if you prefer that. GoodNotes has a really nice user interface that matches the Apple aesthetic, but Notability on the other hand has a subpar UI and confuses me every time I use it. The extent of organization is creating a subject or a divider to group subjects. But what I want to do is have another subsection under my subjects to separate things like homework, projects, and textbooks. So you can already see me struggling over here. I'm just going to create, uh, let's say, an English subject. And then I'm going to put that into my school divider by dragging it in. And then inside I have these two different uh, text notebooks or, that I'm going to put in. But the thing is you can't put um, any subjects underneath the subject, which means you have to put everything under the English folder. And if this sounds really complicated, it's because it is, and I really don't like how Notability does things. The problem with this is that if you're searching for a file later on, um, it doesn't actually tell you which homework folder it is, so if I put a bunch of different homework folders, I can't even change the name to that, uh, like right here, and it just gets really confusing, and the hassle could just be solved by um, copying how Apple does things, or even just copying how GoodNotes does things. If you just look at me struggling even more, um, you can see how bad this looks, and it just just unnecessary hassle, and I hate it. GoodNotes is the clear winner for file organization, and I really don't know how Notability did so bad. If file organization is a big thing for you like it is for me, then GoodNotes is definitely the way to go. To quickly talk about user interface, the clear winner is GoodNotes. They decided to follow the Apple aesthetic, which makes it so much easier to figure out how to do things and where they might be. For example, just for split screen, all you have to do is drag no good notes from the dock to create a new window, instead of having to learn like you do in Notability. So both apps give you the option to change the texture or color of paper, and decide whether it be lined, gridded, or dotted. GoodNotes made it really nice and easy to decide what type of notebook you want, and even allows you to choose what cover you want. So just press New and Notebook, and you get the option to choose a cover, uh, the type of paper, the landscape or portrait, language, cover type, paper type, and everything. 
For covers, there's a wide variety of options which all look nice so you can distinguish your notebooks at a glance. You're even allowed to draw on the cover which can make it even better. For paper styles, you are given a huge variety of templates to choose from, but I'm going to choose A4 since it gives you the freedom to print your notes on later on. So if you have essentials, which are blank, uh, dotted, squared, ruled, and ruled wide, all the papers come in a white, black, or soft yellow, and there are too many templates for me to go through, but I'll just go through the basics. Uh, so there's different writing papers, planning, and even music papers to choose from. Once you chose your style, you can give your notebook a title at the top right here, um, and then you're done. A neat thing is even after you chose your notebook theme, you can insert a different template paper alongside your others just to suit your needs. And you can do that by going to the top right icon right here, um, pressing it, and then either choose from the pre-selected ones here, or you can actually change the template uh, by going more from template right below this section. Uh, but it's really nice, it's really easy to use, and it's super clean. So Notability gives you a variety of options as well, but it's not that great in my opinion. First, you create a new note at the top right by pressing that icon right here, and then immediately brings you to the main page. At the top right again, there are these three dots that give you the option to change uh, your style of paper. So press paper, and then you can see that there are 15 different paper types. So you can just tap through them right here. I'm just gonna show you all of them. Um, and then I'm just going to choose the white one for now. And then you have four different styles of paper to choose from. One is blank, one is lined, grid, and then dotted. And then for each of the different paper types, you have four different sizing options. But that's all Notability has to offer. There's no cover page or anything, and you're extremely limited to what you can do. And for changing the title, you just tap the top right here, change your title, and that's it. GoodNotes has the best templates available out of the two, and if you want the freedom to choose whatever style you want for your notebook, GoodNotes is the way to go. So, if you got to the end of the video or skipped through like how I intended, you might have already decided on which app to get. But if you still need help choosing, here's what I would get for the majority of people. GoodNotes is the better of the two applications. Although it's technically more limited than Notability, it got what right what mattered, and has a really nice file organization and a variety of templates to choose from, which are huge step ups from Notability. It doesn't have any fancy gimmicks, but it's just seamless to use and has nothing huge I would complain about. Only people I would recommend Notability for are math majors or people who like drawing a lot in their notebooks. Thank you so much for watching this really long video, and even if you didn't watch it all, thank you so much for choosing me to help you with your purchase decision. Have a nice day, and bye.